Hey guys, what is up? Mr. J313 here from Bro Gaming Official, and today I am bringing you my Human Kineticist build guide. I am naming this build guide the Ascended Build Guide. I had thought about naming it the Get the Fuck Off My Map Build Guide, but that name was a little too long, so I'm sticking with Ascended. So let's jump right into it. On my weapon, I will always be using the N7 Hurricane with a melee mod and a clip size mod. I will always use the Hurricane on all of my biotic builds, but if you don't have it because it is an ultra rare, there are a few others I would go with. I would also choose the Equalizer, the Sidewinder, and if you don't have either of those, and them only being rare, I hope you would at least have those. The Predator 10, if you have it at 10, is also a good choice. Because even though being a common, it isn't that bad. But the Hurricane is always my top choice because in my opinion, it is the best pistol, probably the best weapon in the game. Now, on equipment, I used the new Adaptive War Amp. It will increase biotic damage dealt by 15%. The Juggernaut Shield would also be a good choice, but for this build, I personally feel like just having that little bit of extra biotic damage would be a good choice. On my Human Vanguard Guide, though, I would be using the Juggernaut Shield, but I will link that in the description if you guys have not seen that, but for this build, you want the Adaptive War Amp. It only costs 70 mission funds, so definitely pick that up for a biotic, biotic build. In my opinion, it is very nice to have, unless it is more melee focused, but this build is not. So on consumables, I would say use a shield mod and a biotic damage mod, a biotic power amp. That's really all I would use on consumables. So with that said, let's jump into the skills. Now pull is the focal point of this build. You're gonna max it out. You're gonna go first three, t bottom, top, bottom. So. On four, the bottom, you're going to be able to pull two enemies. Five, you'll be doing damage while you're holding those enemies. And on bottom for six, you will be able to drain some of their shields. Well, you'll be able to get some of your shields back. So that is really nice. And I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's per enemy, not per pull. So if you're pulling two enemies, you'll be getting 20% shield back. I can't confirm that or not, but I am quite sure that is how that is. But regardless, bottom on six is a must-have because you it is so crucial because you'll be able to get some shields back while you're holding enemies, and then you can just throw them off the map. So that's what this build is all about, getting your shields back, staying ascended, throwing everything off the map that you possibly can. So throw... You're going to be using it just as much as pull, most likely, but you don't need to spec into it. And then same with lance, you will be using it for a little bit of extra damage and detonating combos, but you don't have to pour any skills into it. I do have one point left over, and if I had extra points, I wouldn't put any in lance, I would put them all in barrier. And I will go over that in just a second, but now we're going to jump into biotic ascension and what really the bulk of the build is all about. So. I'm going to be maxing out Biotic Ascension. That's what you want to max out first. You're going to go first three, top, bottom, and then bottom. If you don't know what Biotic Ascension is, real quick, for what it is, is you get six kills at base level, and then you can hold the melee button on whatever system you're on, and you will enter Ascension. You will gain 100 damage resistance, as well as zero cooldown on all abilities, but your abilities will be taking shields. So that's why you want a lot of shields and some good vampire effects so that's where the last ability on pull comes in now I'm gonna choose damage and force because I feel like having any extra damage is nice and duration is useless on this build you don't have to have duration for this build and then I personally chose the combo damage because whenever you have someone who is priming enemies if they have annihilation field or if someone's using tech abilities and you can detonate them with lance the extra damage is very nice to have and then you want to get biotic Pro the efficiency for ascension now the damage is nice if you're making a damage build but this is a more efficiency build so you're gonna want the negative one charge to just go with four total now you only need four kills to enter plus the 30 percent reduction shield cost for abilities so you're gonna be able to use more abilities now without sacrificing your shields so it, it makes you a little bit more survivable as well as being able to do more for your team and for yourself so lastly, we're going to go with Barrier. I would max this out, but I don't have the skills because I only have the Human Kineticist once. If I had her more times, I would definitely be maxing out Barrier. So you're going to go first three, then top, bottom, and if you have the extra skill point, go with top on six. So 
On four, I personally feel like the Max Shields is more effective than the Regen. That's just my personal opinion. If you like the Regen more than the Shields, try it and let me know. But from my testing, I have personally liked the Max Shields over the Regen. I just don't feel like the Regen is enough to warrant the extra 30% shield. So then you're gonna go with bottom on five for every melee hit. You're gonna get 20% of your shields back as well as a melee damage buff of 50%. So that is gonna be able to keep you more in the fight, especially if someone comes up on you and you don't wanna throw them off, you're low on shields, you can just start hitting them and get your shields back and then get them off the map. So like I just said, on six for barrier, if you have the extra skills, guys, this is crucial. You wanna go with top on barrier because for every body kill you get on barrier you will get 10 percent of your shields back now that's not a lot but think about it for every enemy you throw off the map you're going to be using a little bit of your shields but then you're going to get 10 10 percent of it back from that kill and if you're pulling two enemies that's 20 percent of your shields back so it'll be a close to even trade for every kill but that doesn't really matter even with your combo detonations from Lance and then just other general kills with Biotics, you're going to be able to keep your shields going, and that's what this build is all about. Lots of shields, keeping them going, throwing everything off the map. So, that's a good explanation of the build. So, here real quick, we're about to get into some gameplay, and I'm going to show you guys why I love this build. And why, why I really was tempted to name it the Get the Fuck Off My Map build, because that's really all you do with this build, and it's pretty great. And it's also a funny... Funny thing to see, especially whenever you're not even playing as her, your teammates, you'll leave them rolling when they see an enemy just go flying off the map before they can shoot them. So guys, let's get into this gameplay. Alright guys, so here we are with the gameplay, and like I said, this build is all about throwing everything off the map. Now, you cannot use pull or throw on an armored or shielded enemy, so you'll only be able to do it to basic flesh targets, but that is okay. Whenever you come across a sharpshooter, shoot him up a little bit, get him out of there. Armored enemies, you need to be letting your team deal with them more because they're going to be able to put in so much damage to you that you're going to lose your shield. So you don't want to focus on them as much. This build is more about hanging back, dealing with the lesser enemies, and letting your team focus on the high value targets. And whenever I'm facing outlaws, obviously, you know, the saboteurs, agents, anarchists, Berserkers, Pariahs, they're all a big problem for this build, especially whenever they're trying to get up in your face. Berserkers, they don't even have to get up in your face because of Flat Cannon. That is a big problem with this build, is with them spamming Flat Cannon, they will push you out of cover and make you run away. Because losing your shields, you will lose your ascension. So that's why you, another reason you have to be careful with your abilities that you're using, it does use your shield, so you have to keep an eye on that about how much you use, but like you just saw there, throwing enemies around, you're really gonna make everyone on the map a ragdoll for you to play with, and throwing them into other enemies is just a funny sight to see if you're not throwing them off the map. But as you can see here, I'm trying to stay as far away from this Berserker as I possibly can. I'm letting my teammates stay up there and deal with it while this teammate has, she is the Asari Adept, so she has Annihilation Field, she is priming him every so often, and I'm able to just Use my lance and get that detonation off. I am in ascension right now, so it is not, there is no cooldown, but he will not constantly stay primed, so you have to be mindful about when you're gonna use it. Now, see, like I said, losing shields, you need to get out of there. Don't try and fight, because she is a squishy character, and you will go down if you try and stay in there with a the fight. Much like Solarians, she, she is a very squishy character. She cannot tank. I don't really think you can make much of a tank build out of her and I don't know why in the hell you would because I don't think that would be any fun at all. She, like I say in all my builds, every character has a unique passive. Well, almost every character does, especially when it comes down to class. And in my opinion, it is imperative that you use that passive ability for the focal point of your build and that is what all my builds come down to. I look at the passive ability of that character and I work off of it. Because that is what makes that character, that character, is their passive ability. And the human kineticist has biotic ascension, and that is what makes her the human kineticist. And if you build around that or away from that, then I personally don't feel like you're building the human kineticist, you're building something else. 
But that is all my personal opinion, guys. Like all of my builds, they are subjective, and it is all based on my playstyle and my personal opinion. But right there, throwing enemies around like ragdolls, it is just a great class to use. Because while the damage may not be crazy high, it is very fun. And when you're throwing enemies off the map, obviously, they're dead. So, all of the unshielded, unarmored enemies, you can get them out of the map, and that's just less for your team to worry about. And that all goes back to team composition, what your team can do to keep you alive. And then right there, you got to pick your engagements, guys. Sharpshooters, do not run towards them, because with the new buff for snipers doing an extra 44% damage with patch 1.05 rolling out, they will just drop your shield. So you have to be very careful when you're trying to engage them, especially when you want to drop their shields and throw them out of here. You have to be careful not to get too close or too far, or really just stay out of their line of sight. You have to be careful with that, guys. That's like any enemy. You have to keep an eye on your shields because if they're dropping it, you're not going to be able to stay in ascension. Another big thing is Hydras. Hydras, Fiends, and Destroyers. Destroyers have shields and armor, so that makes them a little bit tougher, especially with biotic combos, but like you just saw there with combos and the extra combo damage and radius you can do a lot of damage with lance and adding damage to lance could be could be effective especially if you want to make this a more damage focused build but for my playstyle, i didn't want to do that i did play around with this character a little bit trying out a couple of different builds respecking her a lot but personally i felt like this was the most fun and effective build for my playstyle. now if you guys are more of a I want to deal all the damage and I want to kill everything out there then this build might not be the best for you but this build will definitely get that job done because like I keep saying anything unshielded or unarmored you can kill them with ease you can just throw them off the map especially when you're playing on a map like um, Firebase Zero that, that will be next in the gameplay right here Firebase Zero, there's lots and lots and lots of space for you to throw enemies off the map, especially the good places to hunker down, especially the corner from the spawn if you go left. That corner is great because with all of the dog type enemies running up to you, you can just grab them and throw them off. So they are no longer a problem. And it is a, especially very great whenever you're playing as a human kineticist and you have a sniper or two on your team in that corner because they don't have to worry about the dogs coming up and getting them out of their scope and really just tearing them out of doing any damage. You can worry about them and any other enemy running up on you, especially if they're unarmored or unshielded. But if they are, you need to say, hey guys, I've got a problem over here and I can't deal with it. You have to be humble, guys. You can't think that this character can take everything on because it's not just this build, it's this character. She can't take everything on. She has minimal health and shields and her abilities aren't really scaled for lots of damage whenever we see other biotic builds you know they have charge nova shockwave annihilation field those are all heavy damage based abilities but throw pull and lance not so much lance does not do much damage at all i personally feel like it is a good ability for whenever you have a sniper such as the um a sorry huntress i feel like that is a good pairing with that but throw and pull they don't really do much damage at all so you have to build her to accommodate that so that is why i feel like whenever you're running her at the back of the group or if she's hunkered down behind the rest of the team she can really take care of anything getting close to the team or to do some good AOE and some cleaning around you guys. Now like you just see here, there's all this open space to throw enemies off the map just like this. Now if your shields are getting low, obviously, you know, hold them for a second. Don't just grab them and throw them. Hold them, get your shields back up, and then throw them out. Now going back to the beginning of the video, whenever I said that I run the Hurricane on this build, as well as all my other biotic, biotic ability based builds, I have also run a sniper with the human kineticist and it actually worked very well because you will be able to put in a lot of support and damage with for your team hanging in the back and just if something gets close to you pull throw them off the map and you're good to go and if something comes in that you can't handle just get out of there get out of the situation but for my play style I personally felt like running the hurricane as a aggressive pistol based build 
I really felt like it was a lot more fun. But that's that's just me, guys. If you are more of a sniper player, then you could definitely use a sniper. The Vanquisher, Widow, Black Widow, Ishara. You could use any of those with her, and it would be effective. You know, also, if you are not a fan of those high damage ones, you could use the Valiant as well. And the... I am drawing a blank on it, but it is another sniper just like that. But it is single shot, or the Valiant single shot. I cannot remember, guys. I'm drawing a blank, but I hope you do know what I'm talking about. But those are all good choices for her. She can use them, it, and you can make it work. I have done it, but I don't have any gameplay of it because, like I said, from my playstyle, I felt like she works better as an aggressive pistol because then you're able to run with your team because really, with, if you're running around with a sniper, unless it is an automatic sniper, you're not going to have as good of a time, at least in my opinion, because... It's, it's more going to hinder you, especially with the weight of a sniper, whenever you're not in Ascension. Now see, that's another thing. Weight for her can be a little iffy. You don't have to worry about weight as much as other biotic builds, because you'll be in Ascension mode, and cooldowns will not affect you in Ascended mode, but whenever you're not in Ascension, you need to worry about that. So, you can worry about it, and then you also don't have to. I don't know, it's kind of... I guess that's just personal preference, you know, try it, see if it works for you, but she's a really fun character to use. I love playing her, and I still like going back and playing her, just like my Human Vanguard build, I love playing him still. They're great characters, they're really fun for my playstyle, they're very fast paced, very aggressive, very up in your face, and just getting the job done. So guys, that's really all I have for this build. She's really fun to use, and if you don't have her, I definitely recommend trying to get her out of those premium and expert packs. She is a lot of fun, but being an ultra rare, she can be pretty hard to get, but I definitely recommend trying to pick her up and try this build out or your own build, and let me know down in the comments how it goes. So as always, guys, if you're new around here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out our channel for the rest of our build guides or other videos on other games that we have. And smash that like button, it'll really help us out. And share us with your friends to spread the word. So guys, as always, this has been Mr. J313, and I will catch you on the next one.